Hi everyone, Jen Roke here at stampcampwithjen.com. Today I am going to show you this beautiful multi-panel accordion fold that we made using the Feels Like Frost DSP, um, the Tag Buffet stamp set, and some other great new items from the mini catalog. So this is what it looks like. Before we start, look at that beautiful Feels Like Frost. We have the blue adhesive back gems and the snowflake splendor ribbon. And then when we untie this, this is the big wow moment. When you open it up, it has all of these panels. You almost can't even see it in this card, in the camera. <laughs> but isn't that beautiful? I just love the colors. It's a little non-traditional Christmas colors, but I love it. So I'm gonna show you how to make this today. Now, I also have the PDF tutorial on my blog at stampcampwithjen.com, so um, I'll try to put a link to that in the bottom of this YouTube video post, but uh, if you ever need to go and look for it, it's on my blog. So, all right, so you will need the 12 by 12 whisper white paper for this card because it's so long. Um, we had to cut a little bit for that. So I'm gonna show you this panel here. I went ahead and die cut some of it, um, but this is 12 inches by, I believe four inches, let me see. No, 12 inches by five and a half, excuse me. And all the dimensions will be in the PDF, all the cut dimensions. Um, and I'll probably put them in my blog post as well and at the bottom of this video so that you have them. Um, and then this piece is four and a half by five and a half and we scored it at the half inch, at the four inch mark here. So, and then we also have two panels that we're gonna work on later. We have six pieces of purple posy, and I already cut die cut some of them to save some time as well for the video. And then we have some Night of Navy, Feels Like Frost, and Whisper White. And again, like I said, all that's going to be in the cut instructions. But I do want to tell you, excuse me, you can get uh, one card out of. It doesn't quite use a full sheet of the Whisper or of the Feels Like Frost DSP but almost a complete full sheet for this card. So that's pretty great, actually, I think. Okay, so we're gonna start with our large panel here. So as you can see, we have the score line on our smaller piece. We're gonna take a piece of tear and tape and apply it on our score line right here. Now, I like to use my take your pick tool and use the spatula for this. This is great, especially if you don't have any nails or maybe have thick manicured nails and need to lift it up. I use this all the time with my, um, my tear and tape. So this panel, all of the sections are four inches wide. So it doesn't matter which side we um, adhere this panel to. So I'm just going to pick a side and line it up along the score line here and press down. Okay. So what I actually had everybody do in class was adhere that panel and then die cut. I die cut it first for this card just because I wanted to save time on the video. But what we used for this panel is, if you get your stitched rectangle dies out, we use this number five die. So how I count is one, two, three, four, five right here. And again, this picture will be in the PDF also, so you know which die to use. But that's what we use to cut out all these panels. So we wanna make sure this seam is at the back. And we are going to take I you take four purple posy pieces and we're actually going to use the number four die cut to die cut those so you only want to cut four not all six because two of them are going to be used for the front and the back so we don't want to die cut those we want to leave those separate so what we're going to do is we're going to use these to make frames for this panel so I'm going to get my liquid glue you don't have to use liquid glue. You could use 
seal or tear and tape. I just like liquid glue for this because it kind of gives you a chance to move it before it sets completely. So if you don't have it exactly centered where you want it, you can kind of wiggle it around until you're happy with it and then just press all the way down. So we'll do that for all four of these. And you don't need a big blob of glue, just a line of glue all the way around the frame like that is fine. So this card, it's a little complicated, but if you follow the instructions, watch the video, you should be good to put this together. Honestly, I thought the worst part of this card was cutting everything out. That's what takes the longest. But once you have everything cut and you're ready to go, it really kind of comes together in a snap. So just center these as best we can. They may be a little off, but that's okay. Don't need to be 100% perfect. Just as best as we can. Okay. Okay, so last panel going on. So I'm going to set this aside to dry now, and we're going to work on our smaller panel. Okay, so this panel has two pieces. One of them, the smaller one, is three and a quarter by eight and a half, and this one is three and a quarter by nine. So they're scored at, let's see here, I forget. I think it's two and three quarters. Let's see, two and three quarters and five and a half. And this one's scored at two and three quarters, five and a half, and eight and a half. Now, all of these sections are not equal. So the important thing is to line them up. Here, let me fold some of these so you can kind of see the score lines a little bit better. Okay, so you can see the score lines a little better. So you want to have the sections that are the same size in the middle here. Now, if you flip this over, you'll see these two sections are not the same size. You do not want these together. You want these two sections together because, I'm gonna fold this one too so you can see. You can see that those panels are the same section. So, again, on this small strip, we're gonna use some tear and tape. Tear and tape is good for these because it has a really strong hold, so it'll really hold your panels together really well. So again, I'm gonna use my take your pick tool to grab that tear and tape. And then we're just gonna line it up against the seam and adhere it, okay? Perfect, so now we have our insert that, ha that we're gonna attach all of our stamped images and our feels like frost too. Okay, so now we want to valley fold this. It's called a valley because it looks like mountains and valleys. So this one, let me use my example, yep. So starting at the edge here, we want to go up, down, up, down, up, okay? So you're going to have this weird piece that's a lot bigger in the middle, that's what you want though, okay? So we're going to burnish our score lines on both sides here. Okay, so again, our crease is at the, or our seam is at the back, and this is how it's gonna look at the top before you flip it over, okay? So, that is how it'll go, okay? So we can set this aside for now while we work on our panels. So our two smaller Knight of Navy pieces and our two smaller Feels Like Frost pieces we can put together with some seal. I'll 
do that. I just love the colors on this card though. I just think they're so pretty. This paper is gorgeous. You could really use either side if you wanted to. I just really liked the trees and the snow and I thought it looked so beautiful and it really makes this card pop. So, all right, so we're gonna take our other. So these Knight of Navy panels are all the same size. So you just need two of them and we'll put our other, our bigger feels like frost paper on there. So for this stamp and seal, I know a lot of people have been having some issues with it. The main thing is to apply even pressure and then when you come to the end, kind of go point it straight up and then lift up and that'll break the trail and prevent you from it kind of sticking in the applicator. Okay, so there's that one. So now we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. I love this tag buffet stamp set from the new catalog. I just, I love the scriptiness and I just thought it was really fun and really cute. So we're gonna use this to do our stamping. So I have a couple pieces of Whisper White. I'm gonna grab one of them. They're actually the same size as this Feels Like Frost DSP. It's just Whisper White. So we're gonna work on our Tis the Season first. And we did Tis the Season in Highland Heather. Here. Let's get our Highland Heather ink pad. And center it. Even pressure straight down and back up. Beautiful. I love it. All right. So now We need, what did I do with, oh, here. So this little sprig, let's see if you can see. This little sprig here up at the corner, we're gonna use him for the top and the bottom. We did, we're gonna use Balmy Blue. And we're gonna ink him up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it at the top here and then we're gonna ink him up again and flip him over and do it underneath. And that is how we get that panel. So we can put that one aside. And now we're gonna do the Merry Christmas in Blushing Bride. I'm gonna grab our other panel here. Now for this one, um, the Merry Christmas is one big stamp. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to ink up just the Merry section, just the word Merry, and we're gonna center that kind of towards the top a little bit. There we go. And then we are going to ink up Christmas by itself. Okay. And we're gonna do that one right underneath it. And that's how we get the Merry Christmas to fit. Now, if you don't want to fuss with that, I totally understand not everybody wants to do that. There is a with love for you that will fit just perfectly. You can use that or maybe just do tis the season again, whichever is up to you. Or I think these, um, oh yeah, a little ornament here will fit or the little stocking. Maybe you just wanna do an image. Let's see if you can see that. I think that went out of the camera, yeah. So you could do just an image on the other one instead of doing the, um, the wording if you wanted to so that would be really cute too all right so now we're gonna go to the little berries so 
for me anyway, I thought it was a lot easier to stamp the berries and then center, the berries are in Highland Heather by the way, but I thought it was easier to stamp the berries and then center the leaves on the berries. So that's why I stamped the berries first. There you go. And then we'll do, so that again, the berries are in Highland Heather, and then the holly leaves we're gonna do in Coastal Cabana. And I just think these colors are so fun and so pretty. So let's see here, how do I wanna do this? Here, and then we're gonna do the leaves up here actually. Merry Christmas! I love that. I think that's so cute. I love this set. I'm gonna do so many more projects with it. I see it in my Christmas crafting future. All right, so now we just need to adhere these panels to our Night of Navy. Last one, see this really comes together really quickly. The die cutting and all the measurements, and I got this from another demonstrator. She did a really cute card, but for some reason her um, video and her blog posts were completely different. So I had to go in and try to figure out all the dimensions, and it really took me a long time to figure it out. But once I got it, I knew this was gonna be a home run. This was gonna be really fun. Okay, so our panels, we're going to put them on without gluing them on first, just to kind of visualize where they need to go here. So these panels, like I said, in the middle are a little bit bigger because this center seam is gonna kind of duck in between the card. I'll kind of show you here with the example. Um, so you can kind of see it sticks out a lot in the card. So we want to kind of center this along the outer seams and kind of leave more of an opening in the middle, if that makes sense. Because like I said, it's going to kind of fall behind the middle seam there. And then th this can be centered. These stamped panels can be centered. These smaller panels, you want to center them more towards your inside seams because we're gonna put tear and tape on the edge here to adhere it to the card. So that's what we're gonna do with these. So again, for this one, center it towards the inside seam because we're gonna put tear and tape here in just a minute but we're just gonna adhere our panels for right now. That's what we're working on. Okay. This one can be centered. The stamped ones are centered right in the middle. Okay. So again, this one is centered a little bit closer to the panel on the outside here so centered toward this crease and now for the left side center this one towards the left crease so you kind of see in the middle there's going to be a little bit of a gap but that's okay you want it to be like that Again, the stamped image is centered on this panel. And then our smaller image is centered towards the inside crease here. Okay, now we need to put tear and tape as close to the outer edge as possible. We're gonna use two strips of tear and tape
on both sides, okay? You want it to be as close to that edge as possible because you're still gonna have a little bit of a border here. So you don't wanna line it right up against there or else you're gonna see your tear and tape. You wanna line it as close to the card edge as possible, the panel edge as possible. Okay. Rub those on good. Rub that good, okay. Now, this is the part where you need to pay attention, boys and girls, okay? So we are going to valley fold again. So this one needs to come up, and then this one needs to go back, and this one needs to come up, okay? You want the blank sides to be on the front and the back because we're gonna decorate the front and then you're gonna have a plain back panel. So that's how your valley fold should be. And always remember to keep these seams on that back edge, okay, when you're assembling. So we will bone folder for our creases, okay. Those nice, tight creases as much as we can. center one too. Okay. So again, for this one, the blank panels are going to be on the outside when you valley fold it. Okay. So that's a little bit easier to put together. Now we need to weave this through. Let's see. So you kind of go through the center here and then this goes underneath. And then our panel on the left side is also gonna go underneath, okay? So it's gonna look like that. Now, when we take the tear and tape off and we adhere it, you don't wanna adhere it right up to the edge because these panels that we're gonna put on the back, it's gonna have a little bit of a white border. So if you adhere it exactly to the edge, then you're gonna see this panel. So you don't wanna do that. So you wanna leave a little bit of space when you adhere it and obviously center it between the top and the bottom frame there, okay? So let's go ahead and do that together. Again, use a my take your pick spatula piece to remove the backing. All right, so take your panel and center it. And you, you should be able to use the tear and tape as a guide a little bit. Yep, that's actually perfect. So you want your seam to be on the inside of the frame here. Let's see if you guys can see that. So my seam actually is on the inside of that frame, which is good. And when I adhered it, there is a border here, which is good as well. So really, if you follow where your tear and tape strips end and just lay it underneath where these tear and tape strips are, then you'll have that border for, your, for this piece, and it will also leave a border on the edge. So that's why we put the tear and tape on the edge, on this outer edge here, okay? I hope that made sense. So we're gonna use our spatula again to remove our tape backing. Okay, so again, take your tear and tape and use that as your guide. Make sure it's centered between the top and the bottom and just adhere it where the edge of that tear and tape is right under the bottom there. And if you do that, you'll have enough of a border on the front, okay? So, that is the assembled card. Now, the last few steps are, and see, now that centerpiece that I talked about, you have that big gap, but you don't see it because it's hidden under this centerpiece right there. Isn't that so pretty? I love this card so much. I might make a bunch more of them. <laughs> I really do love it. All right, so this is gonna feel a little funky. The card isn't gonna wanna 
fold like it's supposed to, but that's okay. That's just how it is. It's gonna take a minute to kind of get used to folding how it's supposed to. Okay. So, we just gotta kind of fold it there. Okay, so now we are going to take our panels. So we can take our back panel and go ahead and adhere that one. But first, what we need to do is take a bunch of dimensionals and apply them. So when we apply our dimensionals, we're gonna apply them all around the center in here, okay? We don't wanna apply them towards the edge because again, when we put this panel on, we're gonna have a little bit of a border. So we're gonna apply them all around the center frame leaving a space in the middle for our ribbon. So before we do that, we are going to, let me find my ribbon. I had it just a minute ago. Hmm. I swear, I just had it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so we are using the Snowflake Splendor Ribbon. It's so pretty. It's got that iridescent, shimmery look to it. So how I measure my ribbon is if you kind of use the length of the card and then have a couple inches on either side, that is all you need. So we're gonna do that and cut it off. Now, when we put our dimensionals on the back, the best thing to do is kind of, let's see which one's the back. This is the back, so we're gonna work on the back side first. So what I like to do is I like to kind of put the ribbon about where it's gonna be and then use some pieces to kind of hold the ribbon in place. That way I know where to put my dimensionals and kind of leave that gap. That's what we're gonna do. And you do use quite a few dimensionals, so don't be afraid to kind of layer them on there. It's okay. Put one there and one there. Okay. So now we'll take these off. And it's easier to lay the ribbon down than to try to thread it through later. And it also kind of gives you a good place marker to know where to put your dimensionals. So that's why I like to do that. Because honestly, if you try to go back and thread it through later, it really is a pain. You don't want to do that. I mean, you can do it, but it's just easier to just lay it down and put your panels on over it and not have to fight it. I think we did that one, yep. Okay, so this back panel is, oops, I want our ribbon to be down there. The back panel is just gonna be blank, so we're just gonna center this over the back here. Okay, so now we haven't decorated our front, I realize, so we're gonna kinda set this aside for a minute and we're gonna do our front panel. So for that piece, we have a strip of two by five of that same sheet of feels like frost so we're just gonna apply that right on the front okay i think it needs to go this way it's kind of hard to tell sometimes with the images because they're like that blurry look but they're really pretty so i think that's right side up <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna grab a scrap of Whisper White, and I think for this one, I might use Balmy Blue, because it matches. I think for my original card, I used Coastal Cabana, but this has more of that blue hue to it. So that sentiment is also from this tag buffet, so we're gonna get that out. And we're going to ink that one up in the Balmy Blue. straight up and down even pressure it doesn't have to be perfect on the paper because we're gonna 
like perfectly straight because we're gonna die cut it out here in a minute. So I have the largest square from the Stitch Shape dies. And we are going to, I might have done that too. Oh, I think I might be able to die cut it. I'll be right back. One cut straight through with my new stamp and cut and emboss machine. I love it. You're gonna want one too. They're available to customers on September 1st. See, and that matches really well with that background. So we're just gonna use stamp and seal again for that. I didn't really want to use a bunch of dimensionals and pop a bunch of stuff up on the front just because this card already is so bulky. So I just really did everything flat okay so just to kind of finish it off we're going to use some of these blue adhesive back gems which are so pretty so they have balmy blue and night of navy but since this front is a lighter color the more of the balmy blue we're just going to put a couple of the balmy blue the smaller gems right there nothing too crazy just a few okay so now we're gonna bring our panel back and again we're gonna leave that ribbon in the front kind of hold it down I got an ink pad there and we're gonna use a bunch of dimensionals and go around the inner rim of the frame here All right, so we'll take the backing off. We're almost done, guys. This wasn't really difficult at all. I did all of the cutting and everything beforehand, but now that you have the, the um, dimensions, all the cut dimensions, this should come together in a flash for you. It shouldn't take you very long to cut it, everything out either. All right, so we're just going to kind of center this and put it on. Oh, I love it. Isn't that gorgeous? So we're just going to tie our ribbon. And this ribbon is a little bit stiffer, which is good because it makes it easier to tie your bow. It's not real um, slippery. So, oh, gorgeous. And there we have it. We made a multi-panel accordion card with Feels Like Frost DSP and the new Tag Buffet stamp set from the annual catalog. All right, friends. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. I hope you love this project. Um, if you do, I hope you'll remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and sign up for my newsletter so you never miss important updates and projects. If you do shop with me in August, um, don't forget to use my host code if your um, total is under $150 before shipping and tax. Otherwise, if it's more than $150, just enjoy those stamping rewards. All right, well, I hope you will tune back in on Friday. I will have our 3D project that we made at Stamp Camp and you're not going to want to miss it. It's really fun. So, all right, guys, I hope you have a great day. Be safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye now.